In the last couple of months, I've read through the New Testament from the beginning to the end. And I've been reading it looking for particular things. I've been reading it to see what it says about the end of the world. Now, I like to think about God is love, and I don't think about eternal torment and hellfire too much, but it's all there. It's all there in the New Testament. In every book, the, the indications of the final judgment, of terrible things to come, and many times it's Jesus saying these things. And this final judgment will be on an enormous scale. And Jesus even says that ancient cities like Sodom and Gomorrah are going to come back and judge the cities of his day. So whole cities on this screen. How do we understand it? The way I understand it is the world in which the New Testament was written was very different to ours. It is amazingly different. Now, I put some pictures together, our life, their life, and the life they lived was more like the experience of many people living in a refugee camp than anything that we know. Their world was desperate, their world was unjust, their world was violent, and they didn't want any nice little platitudes about how everything's going to be all right. So this tough language of judgment and condemnation, maybe it was part of what they needed to survive. Now it's against this background that the New Testament writers talked about the end of the world. And it had to be something pretty strong because they were in desperate circumstances. So how do I believe it? Well, as a matter of fact, I don't believe, I don't take these hellfire stories seriously. I know Jesus said, if your eye offends you, pluck it out, your hand offends you, cut it off. I don't know where that came from, but I don't think it came from Jesus. And in fact, if we did that kind of thing, a lot of us would be in insane asylums. Here are three things I hold on to that are in the New Testament about the end of the world. One is in the first chapter of John, John talks about a light like a flickering candle that lights the darkness, but that will never go out, never go out. So that's one thing I believe about the end of the world. The next thing that sustains me is that Paul and others talk about God's plan, God's secret plan. And this secret plan is to eventually bring everything together to restore the creation. He's talking about the rivers and the streams, all of those environmental things, and also mankind, human population, all of them. It is God's intention to bring all of them to himself. And that's a thought that inspires me very greatly. The, re the actual redemption, the recreation of the whole world, and that's what I look forward to. And the third thing that really inspires me and gives me hope is, as Paul says, there are a number of things which last forever, but there is one thing that is greater than all the rest, and that is love. And love will last forever. Don't think of love as romantic love or cuddles or that kind of thing, but the intention of God to save us all, to bring us all into a situation where we will be part 
of a whole creation which is made new in Christ. And now I don't know what that'll look like or when it will come, but as I move into my old age, it's something that I hold dear. And in life or death, I know that love will remain and will sustain not just me, but the whole universe. That's what I think about the end of the world.